Messi. Oh, what a goal it is! Hi, my name is Steffi Sajkor, captain of the Malaysian Women's Team, and you're listening to the Bola Bola Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Bola Bola Show podcast. It's me, Sivan, and today I'm by myself. My two co-host buddy can't make it today, but never mind. We still have an exciting show coming up because with us, we have none other than Steffi Sajko, captain of the Malaysian Women's Team. Welcome to the Bola Bola Show, Steffi. Hello. Hi. Thank you for having me. No uh, the show, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, what are you up to, Carolina, at the moment? Um, be, I mean, besides co- being quarantined, I mean, any other projects that you're undertaking at the moment? Um, so far, no. Just being quarantined in the hotel. Uh, just can't wait to just get out from the quarantine. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 Let's uh, let's go back to your beginning in football. I mean, what was your earliest childhood memory with regards to football? And how did that experience actually make you fall in love with the game? Okay, uh, so yeah, let me start. So how how I started playing football, actually, uh, when I was like eight or nine, that was my first time following my dad. My Because my dad, both my parents, they are sportsmen and sportswomen. Mm-hmm. So my dad, actually, he was playing football at that time. So, now, you know, we were like, me and my brother, he is like two years younger than me. So my dad is always like, you know, every evening you bring all the kids and, and the wife to the field, to the Padang to just support your husband and your father, right? So so he brought us there and then we were like, um, I think I remember that I saw like a ball there, like, you know, there's like extra balls. So one of the balls, I was like, um, okay, you know what? I'm just going to try to like just kick it. Like, you know, like how you see all these kids when you see balls, they just mm-hmm. go and yep, kick yep. the ball, right? Uh, so I think that's how I started um, okay. playing, fo- started kicking the ball so after that I think uh, I think I, I I it's like a regular like a weekend uh, thingy for my dad because it's like a, you know like friendly match every weekend they have right like now how do we play so it's the same thing from the for, for those days so I think uh, I, I I started playing football there and then I think I liked it and it's already it, it's been my hobby since then because mm-hmm. because after that after that uh, I always play football at the Padang with all the boys kaki ayam just go in the Padang and just you know I just play just play just play you know all those those days like uh, even our feel it's not good condition right especially all the yep, taman yep. taman punya Padang and all yeah yes. there's like stones lah and then um, all these uh, uh, small small uh, duri all yes, this yes yeah, so, yeah, and then especially, you know, you know, like this favorite, uh, I don't know what do you call that, daun kemuncup, is it? The one that is very, um, like, you know, when you, you uh, step on it and it was just like, it was just closed, the leaf I, was just closed. I, I not, can't. If I'm not mistaken, you used to call it pokok semalu. If I'm not mistaken. Ah, pokok semalu, yeah, yes, I think yes. so, I think so. So that one kind of like very baduri, right? Oh, yes, especially, yes, tell me about yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So we're like, you know what? It's okay. Just let's just go and play and have fun. So that that's that's how I started, lah. Like those days, just football, football, football. Yeah, mm, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. And um, I mean, did you face challenges like you know back in my time in school? You know, it's always mm. boys play football, girls play netball. Mm. And whenever they, we have girls who want to play football, you know, there's always this uh, you know uh, challenges like the, the teachers won't allow and all that. But was there any such trouble in, in your in your case? Okay, because my school, all girls school. Also, oh, when okay, I, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I grew up in convent, uh, convent typing school. So, mm. uh, growing up in, in, in school, so I was always a very, very sports athletics person because I play, I play foot, I, sorry, we don't have football, futsal in uh, co-curriculum mm-hmm. those days. I think until today, so we don't, we still don't have that. So I, I play netball, I play hockey, I play handball, I play badminton, I play athletics, basically everything. Wow. Every sport I play, I represent the school for every sport. Yeah, no, no, this is true story. Yeah, okay. until until uh, until secondary. So. And then at one point, you know, I had to like, uh, I had to like, uh, okay. So basically, like uh, I play netball and hockey the most. So this is for school Uh school level lah, I mean school level yeah mm-hmm. so at one point my teacher had to like fight 
uh, to to actually wants to take me. Who, which one to take? Either hockey or netball. So it's either one. Then I was like, oh no, okay, don't. I want to play both. So what will I do? So my dad always with me. My dad, my dad is like my was was like my driver. He's like, okay, we're gonna go netball first. After finish netball, then we're gonna gonna go straight to hockey. So no fighting. So just play both. So so even like from those days, like uh, I memang how to say it's very uh very. Uh, active like active in school. So like when football, only I will play outside outside of school. Like I will go to the padang, and then sometimes I will go to in Taiping. There's one big padang. It's called Esplanade Taiping. So uh, mm-hmm. that 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 side you that side okay lah proper grass, and then it's like uh more more boys more guys playing. So whenever you want to play that, uh, I always remember that my father will always bring me there. So they they will question like uh, hey, you sure you can play? Then I'll just say yeah. Okay, and then I said yes, and then they put me in, and then they were like, oh, okay, they like got, they got, they just kept quiet, and they're like, okay, okay, this girl can join us, no problem, anytime. Yeah, also my dad was there, lah. Maybe they're scared of my dad, right? <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no possible, la, no possible. La. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. I mean, growing up while watching the game, is there any one particular footballer that you were inspired the most? Uh, okay. Um, oh, I think back in. When I was nine, and so that's where that's the first. I mean, how I started watching EPL because mm-hmm. I like Michael Owen, oh, oh Michael okay. Owen, and that's when I started supporting Liverpool as well. So okay, I think no problem, Michael <laughs> Michael Owen, then all those. I mean, Michael Owen was the first guy that player that was like, oh okay, I think I like this. I like this. I like this player. He's like he's so talented. He's small but he's fast. You know, like how those. They like how Messi is now. It's, it's, yes, it's similar, yes. yeah. Yep. So and then also his badge. They were like all the I think ninety ninety two England squad. Is it? I'm not mistaken. All this mm-hmm. Beckham's, Coles, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Gary Neville, Phil. Okay, so all of them. So basically, it's it's all the same squad that I actually admire and I love England those days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because of these players. Yeah. I see. Okay, and uh, how did your career in football got started? Because uh, as I understand, uh, mm. you're pretty much a goal scoring machine in the in the women's futsal league. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, okay, yeah, futsal league. Yeah, okay. Uh, I I think uh I started uh professionally in football in year two thousand and six. Um, yeah, so that's where the first time I presented Para for this is called like this women. Uh, let me. Okay, it's called human sports game so it's all it's all only it's only for female mm-hmm. and that's where first they they put in football in also and then they got like a uh, hockey netball and everything so that's where i started playing professionally football and i got called up for immediately i got called up after that 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 uh, tournament for this 2006 under 19 afc tournament for malaysia under 19 mm-hmm. yeah Okay. Yeah, so so that's where I I started football first. Football first, yeah. So so my story is a bit um, it's a bit co- not complicated. It's like just uh, it's like rolling, you know. It's okay. So two thousand six, I play football. Two thousand seven, I play football, mm-hmm. and then two thousand nine, I got called up to play futsal. Mm-hmm. So two thousand okay. okay. After that, two thousand eleven, I went back to football, mm-hmm. and then back in two thousand thirteen. I came back to play futsal. I see. So after 2013 until now, still still active in futsal. Yes, very active. And I actually got back, got got the call out back 10 years after uh this year for this uh a this Asian uh qualifying rounds. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the last I played was 2011 football, then came back 10 years after, which is uh this year. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's here and there, but both I love both sports, so that's why I want I still want to play both of the sports. Yeah. Okay, I mean, for some of us who are, who may not be aware, I know about this. Uh, mm-hmm. what is the what is the structure of the women's football like in Malaysia at the moment? Like, do you have a league? Uh, and which teams are representing in that league? Yeah. Okay. So we're supposed to have a league this year because of pandemic, and then everything got cancelled. Even the futsal got cancelled. Mm-hmm. So for the football, we have this league called Piala Tun Sharifa Rosia. Okay. So every year we we will actually have this league. This is where our this is our platform 
this is our only league lah for the women's uh, to actually participate and then from there you get call up to represent the the national and all. It's the same the same goes to futsal. It's called MPFL, but both just got cancelled because of pandemic. So I guess um, maybe next year, early next year, they will start everything again and and hope to see everyone is you know hopefully everything recovers and and back to normal soon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we hope for, hope for the same. Yeah, as well. yeah. Okay, uh, let's talk about the national team now. Recently, as uh, you all know, that you were preparing for the 2022 AFC mm-hmm. Asian Cup qualifier, mm-hmm. and you were given the honor to captain the team. I mean, how does that make you feel? I, I mean, were you were you expecting this or something? Um, to be honest, uh, no, because for me, I I I came back just because I love football and I just want to play football and I want to do something for the for the country. That's it. Like I don't, I don't expect to be a captain or you know to to lead the team or to do to do such things. Lah. But but when knowing knowing to see all the list, mostly are juniors. So I I thought possibility the possibility to be the leader and the captain. Is high there, so I was I was okay. I mean, um, I'm okay to 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 be the captain and not to be the captain is fine. Yeah, but but I'm very honored, like especially uh to be given uh the captain to me and 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 I guess uh it's a very big thing because it's a it's a, it is an important role, right? For yeah, for me, yeah. So I guess um I was I was I was very happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And of course, you were also given uh, the honor to wear the number ten shirt, which is often regarded the most coveted number in football. <laughs> Any particular reason for this? Um. Okay. Um. Okay. I actually wanted another number, so mm. I yeah. So, but then, um, some other players have had already chosen that number, so I was like, I so, yeah. So I was like, okay, never mind. I'll just go for number ten, since uh. Uh, came back after 10 years and then you know this is for for that and then for you know under the honor of Mokhtar Dahari and, and Michael Owen where that number is uh, yes exactly Michael <laughs> Owen and you have Neymar you have Messi yes. but for me yeah number is not that important as long as you perform in the game that's the most important thing yeah Absolutely. but I guess it helped also in a way yeah, yeah. And, and of course in the recently concluded qualifier i mean uh, could you share with us you know what was the biggest challenge in terms of preparation for this qualification okay uh, you see what what happened was um we okay um the national team the national women's team the last tournament that we that they played like okay, i didn't play that tournament they played was in 2019 uh, c game mm-hmm. so until then there's no there's no any international tournament at okay. all. Mm-hmm. So our first international, I would say, tournament friendly match was actually against Thailand because we didn't have any friendly match even when we were in the training camp because it's mm-hmm. everything is in bubble, right? And we yeah. only had like 25 days of preparation. So that wasn't enough for us to prepare everything especially mm-hmm. to be playing against the World Cup in Thailand and also Palestine mm-hmm. has been has. They are already been preparing since um I think uh early maybe three four months ago because they 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 also just finished their Arab tournament Arab Cup tournament if I'm not mistaken mm-hmm. yeah I see. so everyone was well prepared except for us we we had like twenty five days and we 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 managed to squeeze everything inside twenty everything in twenty five days so I guess that's like the biggest challenge for the coach especially because um yeah because of you know, especially to to Palestine, you know, you have to you have to set up all the visas thirty days before, and then you can't change any players, mm-hmm. uh, last minute because everything happens that you need to prepare everything like thirty days before. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, yeah, like you said, if it's if the tournament is in uh Singapore or Thailand or Vietnam, it's fine because this is in Palestine. You need the visa, so visa is very important. Yeah, so I guess uh. That's the biggest challenge for everyone, including the coaches and the players. Because, uh, to be honest, twenty-five days is not enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. And, and of course, you know, the overall based on your overall performance, uh, Malaysia lost the first first game to Thailand, and then managed to overcome Palestine two 0 mm. which you scored an amazing free kick, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but thank uh, you. I appreciate if you could share, like, what are the positive? I mean, as you mentioned, the challenges mm. and all that, the preparation. You know, it just wasn't enough. But what are the positive takes from this qualification? Um. Okay. Um. I was okay. Losing zero four to Thailand 
we and meet uh, the first two goals were like where we had I mean everyone watched that it was like less than two minutes and we were we were struck we were like oh no what's gonna happen next it's like mm-hmm. oh even to myself I was like oh no what is this like mm-hmm. we were not settled down everything everyone's just like we just I think we we thought like we just came in and then boom, 2-0 is like so fast mm-hmm. and yes Thailand players they are so fast they're super super fast especially having all these uh, all these uh, you know experience uh, fast fit players World Cup players they are really good and they've been training since like January I think in January and maybe last year I think if I'm not mistaken because I, 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 I stopped some of the players non-stop training so I guess because of that, yeah, you know, you know, especially fitness, right? You have to have like continuous training to ha- to have a good fitness, yeah. So, but to be honest, uh, zero four, uh, for me, I think it's it's quite a good result compared to our results before this, our past results uh, against Thailand, and then especially second half, I think we played much better than the first half. We we are still the last second, last second goal our mistake still but then I think uh 4-0 I would say I, I, I was I was quite happy I was quite happy and proud with with the girls performance uh against Thailand and yeah um I mean because within 20, I mean for 25 days of preparation I think to, to be playing against this World Cup team two three four years of training of preparation I think it's a huge difference yeah mm-hmm. okay and going to the Palestine game, I mean, what was what was going through your mind at that time? I mean, what was the mood behind the team when going into the game? I mean, despite what happened mm. against Thailand, now there's still yeah. another game to play. What yeah. was the what was the mood like? Okay, so um, I told the girls, I said, you know what, just forget the past. We lost this game, it's fine. But I said, you know, you come back, you take. We 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 knew what our mistakes were, so. You know, make sure we don't do not repeat the mistakes, especially early goals. So that mm-hmm. that is what first thing that we want to avoid: no early goals. So I told them, you go in. There's nothing to lose. We got nothing. No, we got no more game to play. So just go inside. Just play 200, 300 percent, all out, and just bring back the three points for the country, for Malaysia, for our parents, for and for ourselves. That's it. That's the most important thing. Because for me, I think we have, yeah, we have nothing to lose. But we need to win this game. Then do not underestimate them. Do not be so overconfident. Just go inside and play your best. That's it. Then I think everyone did that after the second half. Yeah. Which is a good good thing. Like good teamwork also. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And now with this qualification is over, what is the next thing for the Malaysian Tigers? And um, is I mean, is there any other uh, tournaments or any other things up- upcoming for, for the national team? Um, to be honest, I I I don't know what's the next um, mm-hmm. next tournament or next uh next uh plan for the for the team. Yeah, because um, uh, I I don't think we qualify already. But depends on uh if depends on certain teams. If there's any pullouts last minute, then maybe we might have another chance to 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 qualify. But I don't, don't want to hope so <laughs> so high, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, in your career, I mean, despite besides this qualification, have you took part in other tournaments as well? I mean, something that I'll, okay, maybe you can share to our listeners. Like, uh, what, like how? How I mean, how is you, it? Have you took part like in other tournaments with Malaysia, say Sea Games or any other other? Oh yes, of course, yeah. Uh, so like in two thousand seven, mm-hmm. um, I played football, football for Sea Games, mm-hmm. and two thousand thirteen also Sea Games. I played futsal. Mm-hmm. And then back in 2017, I play futsal for C games. So, uh, played three C games, two futsal and one football. Oh, yeah, okay. I see. Yeah, and then the rest we have like AFF Championship, AFC Championship. Yeah, that's that's a lot actually in in mm-hmm. between. There. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it's 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 either futsal or football. This only these two. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I mean in your own words. Uh, as a team captain, what are the three most important values that you you carry all the time, and you uh, in, share it with your players? Uh, okay, this is like the the thing that I I always tell my my players, especially especially the young players, right? I told them like for me, the most important is to have good discipline, a good commitment, 
and focus. That's the most important thing. I mean, I told them not only in in you use it in football or in sports, but also in general in life, you need this to if you want to be a successful person, you need this because I think without discipline and commitment, especially you, especially all this, you you won't have a very good attitude and a good mentality. Yeah. So I told them whatever it is, just just juggle your discipline, juggle your commitment. You know everything people see. So. You know, especially when you're you're wearing the national badge, just you know, just just uh, take care of your discipline. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, to end this uh, podcast, basically, what we're gonna do, mm-hmm. we're gonna do something fun here. Let's not talk about it. It's more serious. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna ask you, say, five very simple questions. You just need to answer the first thing that comes out of your mind. Are you ready for that? Okay. So it's like a rapid question, huh? Yeah. Basically. Okay. Let's try. Favorite drink? Mineral water. <laughs> okay, okay. No, really, like seriously, <laughs> mineral water. Okay, <laughs> no, no. Right. Yeah, particular mineral water, not drinking water. Also, yeah. All right, that's good. I mean, we we saw what we saw one player in Euro did the same thing as well. So it's no problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Favorite favorite food? Nasi goreng. Nasi goreng, nice, nice. Favorite hmm. movie? None. Okay. Um. Any favorite type of uh, music or artist that you enjoy listening? Um, I like I like listening to house R and B. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. And favorite holiday destination? Oh, I would want to go to Greece. Wow, nice, nice. <laughs> Santorini, yes. Okay, okay. I, I, it's in my bucket list as well. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right, Steffi. I mean, any last words to our listeners and everyone out there? I mean, care to share anything? Um, no, I just want I just would want to say thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for the support. So just you know, keep on supporting the women's team. Keep on supporting the women's football, the women's futsal. I'm sure one day, uh, we can be as good as as Thailand as Vietnam in in by playing. Maybe one day, you know, could be. Yeah. In, in the World Cup or what it just so just keep on supporting and especially all the younger girls out there who wants to play football futsal just go for it I mean work hard for it you will get there yeah wonderful nice nice and definitely we hope that uh, you and your uh, the teammates as well will you know will create this catalyst whereby so many young girls were willing to take up the game and play football that would be yeah. amazing yeah. yes yes sure okay. hopefully one day yeah definitely Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Steffi, for being a part of the Bola Bola show, for taking your time to be our guest. Uh, really, really, truly humble and honored to have you on board. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. No problem at all. All right. Okay. All right, folks, uh, with that said, uh, we will end this week's episode of the Bola Bola show. Goodbye for now and thank you for listening. Mm-hmm.